Hello, and welcome to the second part of the series on using the TI-83 series calculator. This video focuses on the most basic aspects of operating the device, starting with a key layout and basic arithmetic. This key layout section is going to be a bit tedious, but bear with me. The number of buttons can be a little overwhelming when you first see them. Don't be scared of all of these buttons. I've been using the TI-83 series since 1999, and I still don't know what all of them do. And I'm still a little afraid that if I press the wrong one, I'll fly right out of the building in a Wonka Vader. There is one button that is undoubtedly the most important of all, without which the other buttons would be useless. The On button. You will find it in the lower left corner, and when you press it, your screen should turn on. You will see what we call the Home screen, which is where we do our calculations. You will see a flashing box, and you might see previously entered statements. If you look at the buttons, you'll see that they don't just have something written on them themselves, but that they also have two things written above them. Above and to the left of the button is the second function, yellow on the 83s and blue on the 84s. For example, above the square function is the square root. That means if I want to use the square root function, I have to first hit the second key that's in the upper left corner, and then hit the square function key to reach the square root. You use the second key to turn off the calculator, too. You'll notice that above and to the left of the on key is the word off, meaning that this is the second function of that button. To turn off the calculator, hit second, then on. If you accidentally hit the second key, but you don't mean to use it, you can hit it again to go back to normal mode. Above and to the right of most buttons is usually just a single letter, and you reach those by first hitting the alpha key, which is right below the second key. If I want to put the letter Q on my home screen, I will hit alpha, then the 9 key, because above and to the right of the 9 is the letter Q. Okay, I'm done with the tedious button layout section but feel free to repeat it if you're still having a hard time with it. And I'm going to move on to doing basic arithmetic. The first thing I'm going to say is the most obvious thing in the world. The buttons with the numbers are at the bottom, and the standard four functions are to the right of them. The only thing that's missing is an equals button, and that's because it's been replaced by an enter button. If I want to calculate 9 times 23, I hit 9 times 23, enter, and it pops out 207. If there's anything that the 83 series excels at, it's at how easy it is to write out what you're trying to say. For many other calculators, bad ones in my opinion, to take the square root of a number, say 16, you would type in 16 and then hit the square root key, and it would shoot out 4. Now, if you're writing the square root of 16 on paper, you're going to write the square root before you write 16 or at least you're going to write the square root to the left of 16. So I find that hitting the square root key after what you're taking the square root of to be very counterintuitive, personally. On the 83 series, for most of your calculations, you type them out just as you would write them. To take the square root of 16, you first hit square root. Remember, by hitting second, then the key below the square root sign, then type in 16, then hit enter. Now for something that's not quite so obvious, but extremely important to your algebra class. You'll notice that to the right of the decimal point is a minus sign in parentheses. This is your negative number sign, and this is a very common mistake that I find people make. The button above the plus button is strictly for subtraction, and it cannot be used for typing in negative numbers. If I hit minus 4 plus 5 and an attempt to add positive 5 to negative 4, you will not get what you're trying to get. You need to hit the negative key when typing in a negative 4. That means negative 4 plus 5 and the calculator returns 1. Similarly, if you hit 5 plus minus 4, the calculator will return error syntax. When you see this error, just hit the enter key to go back to the home screen. But if you hit 5 plus negative 4, the calculator will return 1. 
This is a very common mistake that I see people making over and over and over again. So please remember that the negative key is for negative numbers, and the subtraction key is for subtracting numbers. They are not interchangeable, and they will always do different functions. Now you'll notice that when you hit the division key, the screen actually displays a forward slash instead of a division symbol. This is just another way of saying divided by, and it's nothing to be concerned about. Above the division key is that upward pointing arrow. This is oftentimes called a caret symbol, and it's used for exponents. If I want to take 3 to the power of 5, I will type 3 caret 5 enter, and it will return 243. Also, on the left side, you'll find two exponents that are so commonly used that they have their own buttons, the exponents 2 and negative 1. They look like x squared and x inverse. The second function of the negative key is ANS, which is short for answer. You can use this to use the value of the previous answer in a new calculation. Say, for example, I take 2 to the power of 30, and my calculator returns this big mess. Now I want to divide by 64, but I don't want to retype that whole mess. So I'll hit second negative to get answer, and then divide 64, enter. If you type an operator like plus or caret on a blank new input line, the calculator will assume that you intend to use the previous answer. So if my previous answer was 13, and I wanted to multiply this by 4, I would just hit times then 4, and the calculator will fill in answer before the operator. Finally, the comma is not for big numbers. 1,000 is just 1,000, not 1, 000. A comma is for more advanced functions of the calculator that we haven't gotten to yet.